Danke schön, Herr Vorsitzender. Zunächst einmal möchte ich mich entschuldigen für meine erkältungsbedingte, nicht sehr optimale Stimmlage. Zweitens mal möchte ich darauf hinweisen, dass ich unsere Generaldirektion für innere Angelegenheiten hier vertrete aus Brüssel. Die Kolleginnen und Kollegen sind leider so beschäftigt, dass sie es nicht nach Graz geschafft haben, haben mich gebeten, für sie hier zu Ihnen zu sprechen. Deswegen bitte ich auch um Nachsicht, dass ich heute zu Ihnen auf Englisch spreche, aber wir haben hier Dolmetscherinnen und Dolmetscher und insofern bedanke ich mich jetzt schon bei den Kolleginnen, die wir hier nicht sehen, aber die dorthin im anderen Raum sitzen für ihre Mitarbeit. Sie werden feststellen, dass einige der Dinge, die ich sagen werde, Bereiche ergänzen, die Herr Kiefer gerade gesagt hat. Ich will auch noch ein paar Beispiele geben zu der Umsetzung von verschiedenen politischen Maßnahmen in den Städten. Und ähm, möchte eigentlich anfangen mit, äh, mit dem äh, Stockholm-Programm, äh, an dessen Ende wir jetzt äh, gelangt sind. Also at the end of the five years Stockholm program, we are now at an important juncture in the future development of European policies on migration and integration. The input of all players, including local and regional authorities, is needed to determine the priorities for the future, to understand what has worked so far and what has not, and how, after all, to make it better. The debate on integration and its priorities for the future needs to be enlarged and placed in a context of globalization and an EU common migration policy. In fact, migrants are like many other citizens, citizens of a globalized world, and we must not forget this. They are increasingly situated within multiple contexts and have multiple points of reference in terms of identification. Through internet and the social networks, they can maintain or even strengthen their ties with their communities in their country of origin. And we have had many examples of this recently. Emotional and social and also spatial ties have different meanings with implications for questions of identity and cultural or language maintenance and therefore also for social cohesion at the local level. Obviously, it already has been said here, integration first happens locally. And it is locally that policy measures are often best implemented, monitored, benchmarked and evaluated. Yet, we have a responsibility at all levels, at European level, at national and at local level. We have already heard this also to help to create favorable conditions for migrants' economic, social and cultural participation in the receiving societies. If the benefits of migration are to be realized for both individuals and society, we need to succeed with this process. Now, Integration is, is a puzzle made of many pieces. All stakeholders have to assume their responsibility in putting together this puzzle by looking at questions that are relevant for integration, stemming from access to employment, to non-discrimination, from participation to fight against poverty, and social inclusion from equal opportunities and good education attainments for second generation migrants to the complex interrelation between citizenship and integration. Integration is a consideration of growing importance in Europe and the EU can provide a framework for monitoring and benchmarking and support the exchange of good practices in this area. There is, and you know that, no harmonization of legislation in this field. But Integration is closely linked to a framework of legislation defined and coordinated at EU level, including the directives on equal treatment and in the area of legal migration. Now, it is obvious that migration and immigration policy are closely interlinked. In this sense, integration and immigration are two sides of the same coin. At this very moment, the Commission actually finds itself in a situation of reflection, where input from all the concerned stakeholders is welcome. The Commission is currently drawing up um, a political vision for what will come after the Stockholm programme, including for migration and integration. 
So this is an opportunity to reflect on how we can proceed, to reflect on the challenges we are facing in the future and the ways to address them. A catalog of initiatives fixed for five years does not seem adequate anymore. Contrary to the previous programs prepared for a five-year period, the strategic nature of this exercise may justify enlarging the duration of the initiative under the mandate of the next Commission. Our intention is to benefit from an open discussion with a wide range of stakeholders, including national government, local and regional representatives, civil society and researchers. Now, in this respect, I invite you to share your views on the online public debate on the future of home affairs policies. It's on the Europe uh, website. It is called An Open and Safe Europe, What Next? which will be open until the 12th of January of 2014, so there is still time for you to uh, give some input. We will organize also a conference on January 29 and 30 next year to present the main ideas of the contributions that have been made in this consultation process, and we aim to present a communication on the outcome by the end of February 2014. Now, what are the role of uh, local and regional authorities? We've already heard a lot about this. If we look at the main building blocks of integration policies in the EU and their implementation, we can clearly see that local and regional authorities play a prominent role. In effect, focusing on the local and regional dimension of integration is one of the priorities identified already by the 2011 European Agenda for Integration. Cities, in particular, attract large groups of immigrants, and they face something of what I would call an urban paradox, in the sense that they are the most important centers of competitiveness, growth and prosperity, and at the end, at the same time, they face the biggest challenges in terms of concentration, of unemployment, segregation, and even poverty to certain urban areas. On a city level, the disparities between migrants and the native population are not evenly spread, and cities need strategies to address the challenges and especially disadvantaged areas in which the rate of migrants is often excessively high. As many newcomers settle in urban areas, the cities need to have the capacities to provide the support needed during the, the first period of residence. Now, I can give you an example, for example, uh, of the city of Vienna, here in Austria, which provides new migrants with comprehensive support and orientation through an integration program and a welcome package, to which migrants are referred by an immigration office. It includes individual coaching, multilingual lectures about laws and structures of the Austrian education and public health and healthcare systems, labor market and local housing market. It also includes attending lectures given access to language courses vouchers. So cities are already doing uh, quite a lot, but of course uh, it is still not enough. Too often uh, we find that the current national debates on integration revolve around a monocultural vision and strong emphasis on ethnic and religious diversity, which can ham hamper, in the end, fostering social cohesion at the local level and impede identification strategies of groups and individuals. Probably a broader definition of diversity and identity in the debates reflecting also the binding force of local identities is needed. Integration is not primarily achieved through laws and regulations. We need to look at the changes that both big cities and small centers are experiencing on a social, anthropological, as well as territorial level to imagine future strategies. Now, from all this, it is therefore clear that a bottom-up approach to integration is the only way to ensure that it will work. But what do we mean when we talk about a bottom-up approach? 
First of all, it means recognizing that local and regional authorities have a cross-cutting role in all aspects of integration policy, from its conception to its implementation. Cities, regions, and their political representatives have a clear role to play also when communicating about migration and integration. Objective information is needed, as well as evidence to balance misleading perceptions, which can easily create the wrong picture of the actual situation. Despite a tougher climate, opinion surveys do not necessarily confirm the increase of negative attitudes towards migrants and migrations. More and more cities, for example, organize information and awareness raising campaigns. The city of Barcelona, uh, which by chance I have visited over the weekend, is a good example where despite the crisis in Spain, you feel that there is a successful uh, anti-rumors campaign which sort of com contributes to uh, tackling stereotypes and prejudices concerning migrants. And uh, anyone of you who has been in Barcelona knows that there is a big quota of immigration of third country nationals, particularly coming from Latin Americas. <clears throat> it means recognizing that cities and regions are often proactive, innovative actors to find solutions, for instance, to enhance migrants' participation in civil and political life or in their relationships with their countries of origins. I could give you a couple of other examples. Uh, for example, it has, mentioned, it has been mentioned by Mr. Kiefer, the voting rights that third country nationals do not have in uh, the countries where uh, they sort of settle down. But in Italy, a couple of cities like Milan, Genoa, Rimini, Rome, Ancona, Padua, and so on, have started advocating for political rights of migrants and putting in place alternative forms of political participation. So this is yet another positive example of proactive approach on part of the cities. But it also means enabling cities and regions to compare differences and commonalities which means exchange of views and interaction and take stock of which policies have been successful and have allowed drawing lessons from good practices in the cities. Now, let me shortly take stock. The Commission's cooperations with local and regional authorities takes place in a variety of forms, including through our cooperation with the Committee of the Regions, as well as through bilateral contacts with representations of regions and cities and umbrella organizations in Brussels and beyond. But we need to keep ensuring better co cooperation with the local and regional authorities and more attention for the local and regional levels in integration strategies. And we can do this by taking profit of the existing European networks of cities and regions and making them work better together. This is why, for example, at the last two meetings of the European Integration Forum, we have decided to invite not only the most important existing networks of cities and regions, but also some local, local and regional practitioners, around 20 that were selected with the help of the Committee of the Regions. <clears throat> the forum is the main European arena uh, co-organized by the Commission and the e European Economic and Social Committee for consultation with civil society on integration matters. Uh, I mentioned the forum as indeed an important aspect in the governments of integration policy at the local level is the involvement of civil society organizations in defining and implementing integration policies. For the first time ever, a selected number of local and regional representatives and representatives of the main European networks of cities and regions active in the field of integration were also invited to attend a, a meeting of national contact points on integration, which is the EU network bringing together officials from all ministries responsible for integration. EU institutions and national governments have a clear role to help cities and regions addressing the challenges they face, to stimulate economic and cultural activity, to fight against and manage the consequences of poverty, and to promote social cohesion. Now, as you know, EU funding can be a powerful tool. The European Integration Fund has proven valuable in supporting member states' efforts to facilitate migrants' integration. 
we are pleased to see promising results and improvements in situations. For example, in the Czech Republic, through EU funding and joint programming, several regional migration centers were created, covering Prague and almost all Czech regions, to provide different types of information and services, including language classes to migrants. Now, different EU funds have been and will continue to be useful in this field. Now, as you know, we are approaching a new financial framework. The regulation established, uh, establishing a new fund for asylum and migration in the years from 2014 to 2020, which as proposed would result from the merge of the current integration, refugee and return funds, is under negotiation presently. In our proposal for this fund, we placed strong emphasis on local and regional integration procedures and measures. <coughs> Excuse me. We have asked, asked all member states to prepare, implement, monitor and evaluate their national programs in partnership with competent regional, local, urban and other public authorities. But, as I said, the regulation is still under negotiation. We have already uh, just finished a process of policy dialogue with member states where the priorities have been discussed with each member state. Now the member states are preparing their multi-annual program and the Commission will have to verify if they reflect what has been discussed previously that the focus on the local level is still one of the priorities for the Commission in the area of integration. In the policy dialogue, there was a recurrent attention to issues such as capacity building of staff for local and regional authorities, which was already present in the previous programming period and that we know to be, important, to be an important part to meet the need of migration population. Now, I don't want to go too much into detail, but perhaps um, just give you a couple of other uh, elements on the debate on integration for our future approach. I've already outlined a couple of elements of what we are doing so far, but however, we need to do even more and better in the future, and in a rapidly changing environment with serious economic challenges and new mobility patterns, our current policies will not be enough. So, on a societal level, year after year, figures confirm that the most pressing challenges include prevailing low employment levels of migrants, especially for women, rising unemployment and high levels of overqualification of migrants, increasing risks of social inclusion and gaps of educational achievement. Just to give an example, in 2012, the average unemployment rate of third country nationals across the EU 27 was 21.3% against 12.6% of EU 27 citizens, which means double. In 2011, the average overqualification rate of third country nationals, and I'm talking here of the age group between 20 and 64, across the EU 27 was 37 against an average of 20 for the total population. It's almost also more than half. The same applies for poverty and social exclusion. exclusion. So, these figures, as well as public concerns, must be taken into account when designing integration policies as well as other policies. In effect, successfully meeting integration challenges translate into a general improvement of our society's well-being. Now, we are also working on a couple of uh, integration indicators and uh, I just want to mention very shortly uh, a couple of them. It's work in progress. Um, but they also cannot be used taking into account the diversity of local context policies and characteristics of migrant population. So in the future, we have to decline these indicators, taking into account experiences from local and regional authorities who are more advanced, as a matter of fact, in collecting their own data so that synergies are created. Um, I cannot stress enough that we need to make sure that all efforts we make are coherent, and build on each other in the framework of a common approach. Now this approach, which is in line with 10 common basic principles for integration, revolves about some basic building blocks. And to finish, I'm just going to mention which are the four basic building 
blocks. First of all, the EU needs to continue supporting exchange and advance, advance knowledge on tools for integration. We did this with the handbooks and the modules, that is for language learning, participation and other aspects, and the rich analysis and best practices on the European website of integration. And we need to continue in order to reinforce our mutual actions and benefit from each other's knowledge. Secondly, we need to look at integration at larger and consider all aspects that are part of this and linked to legal migration, like for instance family reunification, <clears throat> which is a clear powerful integration tool, and citizenship acquisition for long-term residents and migrants' children. This is necessary for sustainable integration in a longer-term perspective. Thirdly, a sustainable integration policy is the only recipe for success of migration policies. We need to invest in integration to empower migrants who are the citizens of today and of tomorrow. This investment goes beyond investing in their skills to ensure access or reentry into the labor market, but has to touch upon their interaction with society in which they live, its values and the way it is functioning. This, from our point of view, is the heart of social inclusion. And fourthly, a sustainable integration policy which is flexible and takes into account the diversities of national and local contexts. Different categories of migrants have different needs and different tools have to be adapted to cater for these groups. So to conclude, let me stress that the role of local and regional authorities is already and will remain a key element of our policies. And we ask ourselves how concretely we can bring in their input through, as I said, this bottom-up approach process, which can then be consolidated and reconduced in a common framework at European level. Now is the time to reflect together and to orient our priorities for future actions in the fields of migration and integration. We need to know from you as local and regional stakeholders, what we have to improve and what still needs to be done. Integration can only work in a true sense of partnership. Thank you.